Hey, everybody, welcome to the 6-5 podcast on the road at Amazon Remars. I'm one of your hosts, Daniel Newman, principal analyst, founding partner at Futurum Research, joined by Patrick Moorhead, CEO and founder of More Insights and Strategy. And Daniel, I am so glad to be here. You know, they should rename this to Amazon Recool. The coolest tech is here. I mean, we're looking at machine learning. We're looking at automation. We're looking at robotics and we're looking at space. And I can't think of four things, you know, a little bit of quantum in there to to really talk about the future of technology and future capabilities out there. Yeah, you know, I got here and I didn't really know what to expect. We have the reinvent vibe, huge event, wall to wall. And don't get me wrong, there's a lot of people here. Right. But a little bit different though also. A lot of intimate, you know, conversations being had here. And the stuff that we kind of consider ourselves smart guys, right? And hopefully everyone out there agrees if you're listening to us. Hopefully it's because you find our insights and our analysis to be intelligent. But this is a place full of smarter guys <laughs> and Absolutely. smarter gals. And 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 I'm just have to say I walk away from this event feeling feeling like I've I've had a, a PhD in life. And I've learned about space and robots and, and AI at a whole nother level than right. I ever thought about. Well, the coolest part, and maybe I mischaracterize it up front, this isn't just about the future. There are uh, all the things in Mars that are happening uh, today. And that's, I think, part of the allure for everybody, right? If Even if you want to know just what's happening today, there, there was value. But if you want to think about and really you're a thinker and you think about the future and want to know what earth is going to be like or other planets are going to be like in 25 years, you get that uh, as well. And yes, Daniel, I feel like we were the, uh, everybody else is a PhD and, 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 and we weren't, but that's okay. Cause our role here is to, is to, you know, I think one of our superpowers, and I think we both share this is to make this relevant to more people more people than PhDs. And I think investors, uh, if you're looking at where should you place uh, some of your next bets, I think this is important as well to see these capabilities because this is the next, you know, $150 trillion markets out here. Oh yeah. I mean, we've watched the space race. That's been a thing. We know AI is going to be huge and there is a relentless pursuit Anyone betting against AI has lost the plot. I don't care what the market's doing. Well, it's right because now. it's a reality today. Oh. I mean, even Amazon has a hundred thousand customers doing, a, you know, AI. They're the largest, but there's also other companies that are doing this too. And then you got future technologies like future of commerce. I think everybody thought during the pandemic that retail was was dead. But by the way, Amazon is one of the most interesting innovators and pioneers of what retail will look like next. It's not retail going away. It's different retail. And so, so let's talk about that. So yeah. I came up with like four things. I don't know if you want to add anything, but maybe we just go down the list because this this show is a chance for you and I to sort of hit on some of the, the high notes, things that really caught our attention. And by exactly. the way, there was way more than four, but we're only going to take about 20 minutes total here. Um, and so, and of course, if you're out there, just know there are going to be three other interviews. We're going to talk about space and AI and, and, and ML and some other things on these other shows. So make sure you tune into all of them. But Let's just start with space. Sure. The next frontier. You know, what are some of your impressions with all the things you heard about space here and tying it together to some of the everyday tech stuff we talk about? Yeah, so it's interesting. I walked in thinking that we were going to be talking about exploring uh, new worlds and moon bases and space stations, and we got a little bit of that. But I think uh, one of the biggest eye-openers to me was how to make life on Earth better than better by doing things like research in space or photography in space to be able to better optimize uh, for agriculture to, you know, we had, we talked to Clint about how uh, instead of a three day response in the rainforest, uh, when there's a fire, more of a, like a three minute response to know immediately to be able to, so good for sustainability. So uh, being able to um, do drugs and gosh, 
we we you love this having a fab in the space. That's Hold on, you said be able to do drugs. Oh, you love sorry. this, and then you talk about building a fab in space. <laughs> sorry to create <laughs> drugs that uh, doing it in a weightless and gravity uh, is better. That's so, a highlight moment, by the no, way. No, I appreciate I, that. I, no, I actually that'll, I really that'll, like that'll, that. That'll make the super cut. There is, by the way, some you know, entertainment value in, in some of these little moments. But yeah, I said that, I said, you know, what are we going to like the Millennium Falcon in space? It's going to be like the ultimate fab, you know, right. we're going to be doing negative one millimeter in space. Right. Uh, <laughs> you know, but um, the idea of, of going 3d and by the way, that's, a, there's a really great analogy there as we of course talk about chiplets and 3d packaging all the time in the semiconductor space, space kind of gives us a 3d opportunity to do things that we're doing on earth and make that those three dimensions larger. Right. Um, you know, the development of, of drug compounds that could be create benefits for people on Earth, the ability to, you know, uh, learn how to farm better to deal with hunger and starvation right. on other planets. But I also really love the pragmatic sort of this isn't just the future. This is the now to know that Amazon, its partners, you know, Orville Reef, that they're working right. on building real futuristic communities where private space, uh, you know, can become something that is accessible. Um, and even, you know, as fatalistic as it is, they talk about things like the extinction events, exactly. um, where are we, as the planet continues to become more congested, as we are struggling with climate and sustainability, does space and low orbit space become an option to help us deal with the congestion? Because I know we don't want to face the realities. That's sort of the marker of the human condition, but we need to. Yeah, maybe I'll end, end this part of the space segment just talking about um, I have some, you know, renewed faith in private uh, public partnerships here. And it seemed like for a while, whether it was uh, space or aeronautics, things like that seem to work at a glacial pace. Right. And, you know, I, I mean, it's I've seen multiple research studies on this that. Typically, when you, we have an all government doing something, there's a five to ten x waste. That's you know we've always heard, we've always heard about the five thousand dollar wrench, right? To to fix something uh, on a on an aircraft carrier. Well, here we have um, new ways of inventing that are coming through companies like uh, Blue Origin and and AWS. It's, it's great stuff. Absolutely. In fact, I would argue that the private is what's the accelerant. In working oh, with the public, oh, oh, absolutely, and it's brought it back. It's made it cool, um, you know, made it interesting, provocative, and controversial all at the same time. Which, exactly. by the way, creates a lot of attention, and that's the attention we needed to bring back to science. Um, and you know, there's so much more, Pat. I, I still remember the first time that Amazon Go was brought to my attention, right. and God, I thought that was cool. But there was a lot of limitations early on, right? Sure. And so, part of the whole automation, robotics, IoT, AI, is really about creating the practical experiences of the future. And so one of the things we heard about quite a bit here was that kind of future of commerce. So whether that's autonomous warehouses, which by the way, if you've ever been on site at an Amazon warehouse to see how this actually happens, like, well, you yeah, know, you and I, you and I visited one in, in South Austin, which uh, at, at that San point Marcos. it was state of the art. And we saw a lot of the video we saw in person, which by the way, uh, they do do uh, open tours for the public that, that you can sign up for. But literally, you know, it's funny. I was expecting uh, robots to be taking little little things and doing pick, pick, pack, ship. But what happens in reality is literally the entire inventory stack uh, in a pod moves, right? And then a person comes in and takes it and is being you know moved around by these uh, orange cool looking robots which they had out uh, on the show floor so this is reality and i think what we saw is is what does the next generation look like and one of the coolest um thing that, that that i saw that i think could help kind of in this distribution warehouse of the future is this uh, uh bipedal robot that uh is is invested in part amazon is in investing in this company that uh, does it, that kind of takes that to the next level because current robots are two-dimensional, right? right? You and I both saw it. And taking that to three-dimensional, uh, I, I can see really helping to help with this labor crisis where we just can't get enough workers to, uh, to do jobs. Well, we need automation at scale. And what's most interesting maybe about the whole future commerce experience 
uh, experience and what Amazon talked about here at Remars was more of an amalgamation of technologies. Right. You know, I guess you could put one of these in space, but definitely the rest of the Mars, like machine learning, automation, robotics put together are going to create an experience in the future where shopping really does look different, meaning that our interactions with retail, our interactions in a distribution center facility, at a ballpark, in a smart city are going to be more seamless, frictionless. And that's really what the future is about. You want something to drink, you know, you know who you are, you take it off the shelf, you open it, you you know, you've got IOT reading your metrics, telling you your hydration levels, you've got the store being notified, what it is you've purchased, you're going to be able to have medical records connected to that that's going to tell you, you know, what particular foods are, are reacting the best in your blood types. Now, again, I'm getting out there. But right now, just even having that shopping cart that you can just load, walk into the store, load up everything you need, walk out of the checkout aisle, have it know whom to bill. Right. You're not shoplifting. Right. And you don't need all. And again, how do you don't, get? Don't forget about the uh, the one. Right. You need to put your uh, your palm up there. You gotta, yeah. There's a biometric, or, or maybe at right. least now. In the future, maybe, maybe not, because you got computer vision. It knows who you are. It knows right. you were in the store. It knows which cart you had, what stuff ended up in it. That could be very quickly detected. It could be calculated, tabulated, tied to a, you know, some sort of digital currency, crypto, whatever that final route, that final thing ends up being. But it is, think of it, it's IoT, it's robotics, it's AI, it's ML, it's, it's um, you know, frictionless commerce. It's a lot of technologies. It's data, it's health all brought together. The future is not going to be any of these technologies in vacuums, Pat. It's going to be technology culminated to change our lives. You know, you said the word frictionless, and I remember uh, back when Amazon started back in the 90s, uh, one of the first things they did that was one of their superpowers is there was the easiest way to check out. And every single thing that they did to that experience made it made it easier. And then it was the the buy now. We're not just add to cart, just just buy now. And then the ability to not get something in one or two weeks, but to get it in in a week and then a day and then in within a few hours. So reducing friction in commerce is everything that Amazon started with. And it's it's ironic that they've literally stuck to that path as it comes to commerce. Because if you think about all these things for supply chains and all the robotics in the data center, sorry, robotics in, in the warehouses, um, it's all about taking friction out of every step uh, of uh, of the way. Um, yeah, so listen, there's a lot there. So we have a few minutes left, and I just want to maybe touch on two other things that I thought were super interesting. Um, take a second here, yeah. conversational AI. It's been sort of this over-promised, under-delivered technology for some time. Anyone that's interacted with any of the smart speakers up to this point knows that there's a lot of limitations in terms of what each turn looks like. They call it a turn. Amazon is showing a real promise that this this next generation of conversation is going to start to feel natural, Pat. And I think that is earth changing. When we start talking and interacting with the machine in a more human, empathic, useful way, that's going to bring AI into the mainstream in a way we've never seen before. Yeah, the, the one example that, that they showed in the keynote um, that really was amazing was having a mapping of the grandmother's voice uh, and reading the book to um, the grandchild, yep. right? And it wasn't actually the grandmother reading the book. I mean, heck, the grandmother could have passed away, yeah. right, if you think about that. And and that kind of really jogs your memory, but it, but it is definitely uh, next generation on there. And, I mean, speaking of next generation – brain computer interface. I yeah. mean, you know, we, we've seen it out there, but but we actually saw pictures of a real a human with a real brain computer interface uh, that could that help them walk when they couldn't walk before. It augmented their ability and uh, to actually walk. Uh, and I think that is mind blowing. Well, the number one thing for someone that experiences complete paralysis is what they was identified is they want the ability to message. Right. And so the that's really the human connection. And at this point, if you think about the interdependence that we've created with our devices, and again, it's it's a it's a portal to our world. Um, the, the fact that they're building a technology and they demonstrated this here, right. 
you know, using neuroscience and technology. Well, actually it, using a, a stint a type stint. of technology to, eight, put, to put the probe in was, was amazing. And then using Bluetooth to have that real-time transmitter so you don't have a wire hanging out of your head the yeah. whole day. So some of us, you know, the joke <laughs> that the, the keynote gave was kind of like some of us may not want that level of transparency to have every thought be able to be displayed. But the idea for someone that's lost the ability to communicate to the world, bringing it back, it's like bringing vision back for blind, for blindness or bringing, you know, the ability to hear back for the hearing impaired, bringing the ability to communicate for right. someone that cannot communicate. I mean, it, it, I don't know about you, Pat, but it felt heartwarming to me. And it also just felt amazing. Like, wow. And, and by the way, I also felt like what I do just became way less important, like the things we do, but what we can do is talk about it. Exactly. And educate people and quite frankly, you know, motivate people to invest more and, and do more and, and hopefully maybe limit the creepy factor a, a little bit. Cause when you think about this, you know, some people, when you talk about it, they, they might cringe, but when you think about the ability to, like you said, help a person who couldn't communicate before communicate a person who could never walk to be able to walk, that is, is game changing and kind of, you know, makes you know, my job a little, but I think we have a role as industry analysts and, and educators out there in, in the market to talk about this, which which we're we're doing right now. So Daniel, I think this was a fun wrap up. I mean, gosh, you and I could probably sit here for two hours and pontificate, philosophize and talk about this because it's it it's really incredible. But I had a I had a great experience and it was great. Uh, it was great being here with you too. Yeah, absolutely. On the road has to hit the road, but thanks everybody for tuning in. Six, five on the road at Amazon Remars. Check out all the episodes. So much here, so much to learn. And I promise you this will not be the last time we're talking about these topics or this event. Take we'll care. See y'all later.